Stranger Things Season 4 is over, and fans agree that one of the standouts this season was Eddie Munson. From the character to his story, people loved everything. On that note, rest in light and peace, dear Eddie. But did you know that this whole plotline was also reminiscent of an aspect of the 80s? Yes, the public's hate for D&D wasn't so far from the truth. So let's talk about the 80s infamous Satanic Panic. First up, let's give you some background. The Duffers don't really do anything without a purpose, and if there's anything they're always spot on about, it's their astonishingly accurate depiction of the 80s. Turns out the town's hostility towards the Hellfire Club was also a nod to the America of three decades ago. So if you hated Jason this season, first of all, you weren't alone in that, but your reason for it was probably how he was so sure that Eddie and his friends had killed Chrissy because they're all in a cult. And if you also thought that the reaction people of Hawkins had to this accusation was a bit over the top, you probably don't know much about the very real hysteria that existed in the 1980s about Dungeons and Dragons. A lot of people back then were against role-playing games, but D&D's popularity was what made all hell break loose. Most of the opposers were religious people, and they were convinced that this game was bringing harm to society. But not just any harm, folks. We're talking opening gateways for demons, worshipping Satan, and indulging in witchcraft kind of harm. Sounds a bit like Jason's annoying speech, right? The less supernatural accusation that this fantasy game designed for nerds, including things like child murder, child abuse, and suicide to name just a few. This phase was later dubbed the Satanic Panic, which is now back in discussion thanks to Stranger Things. But how could this even be a thing? It's an absurd thing to believe that a board game with fantastical creatures and scenarios would turn teenagers into spawns of the devil. So let's try and dive into the mindsets that could have led to this being a thing. Well, one of the main reasons people gave for their suspicion was how seriously the kids took the game. The way the players got immersed in the lore of their campaigns and also embodied their characters so seriously was something absolutely new, and the passion for it was unlike that for any other board game. This led people to believe that this game was messing with their heads. Can people please let nerds be nerds in peace? So to put it shortly, the game's demonic, makes players lose their sense of self and become part of a satanic cult, drives them to self-harm, child abuse, murder, and a whole lot of other evil stuff with society rotting potential. Nonetheless, today you'd have to graduate from the Imperial College of Crazy with a master's in conspiracy theories to believe any of this. So why did so many people buy into this back then so easily? Experts say that the answer could be the rapid shift in cultural values that the 80s introduced. It was the first time major shifts were seen in society from traditional values to more unconventional and modern ideas. We all know how welcoming the little human species is to change. So naturally, this caused a moral panic. Conveniently, at the time, there were also thousands of teenagers sitting for hours on end, impersonating characters, and running campaigns with their dungeon masters. So, predictably, they had to bear the brunt. So could Stranger Things be bringing this back? The D&D enthusiast kids of the 80s are all now grown up, and there's no doubt that this season has reminded them of all the craze of their childhood. The satanic panic of their times is definitely back in the discourse as well, but we think it's safe to say that the show hasn't breathed a new life into it. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. The sad truth is that throughout human history, all generations have been guilty of targeting certain groups of people. Why is that? Because it's easy. We all look at all what's wrong with society, murder, assault and abuse, and other unexplainable monstrosities, bags of chips filled with air, and unskippable ads. And we blame those we find different than us for it because it's complicated to find and weed out the real root causes. These marginalized people have changed throughout the years, from witches being burned in the 1600s to Eddie Munson being banished in the 1980s. But the concept still stands. So maybe it isn't board games for our generation, but there are still people who believe in satanic cults who actually do more harm in trying to eliminate them than any alleged cults do, much like Jason and company. So it's important to be mindful of what we believe in so that we aren't the crazy ones decades from now. Also, in all fairness, the world hasn't still quite warmed up to Dungeons & Dragons players, but thankfully, this time, it's only about the weirdo and geeky factor, and Satan isn't involved. We don't deserve the nerds, do we? Now let's hear some real stories from the 1980s. This hysteria wasn't just based on words. There would regularly be accusations faced by D&D players for all kinds of crimes. This one time, a school near LA was accused of abusing hundreds of children in an underground secret space. Over the years, thousands of such accusations were made. Interestingly, none of them had any evidence and were proven false. But the rumors did their thing of adding to the mass hysteria. This one's from 1979, but it counts. A child prodigy, James Dallas Egbert III, disappeared from his room at university at the age of 16. The detective hired to find him was convinced that this had something to do with D&D. The truth was that James suffered from major depression and addiction, and his disappearance was just him hiding in a tunnel because of an intense breakdown. Sadly, in 1980, he passed away by suicide. Just imagine how strong the D&D panic was because even after evidence of his mental health problems, there were activists who still believed it was the game that killed him. Another sad story from 1982 when Irving Lee Pulling, a high school student, committed suicide. This time, too, there was clear evidence that was suffering from major mental health issues, but people, including his mother, believed D&D was responsible for his death. All right, then there must have been attempts to stop it. Yes, that's right. There were mass campaigns to stop this evil from spreading. One of the mainstream ones called Bothered About Dungeons & Dragons, or BAD, formed by 
Poling's mother, Patricia Poling in 1983 after she sued her son's school principal for being involved in his death. Bad used conservative media outlets to voice their concerns. They thought the game was spreading crimes and was causing society's decay. Other than this, there was the widely distributed comic book called Dark Dungeon, filled with propaganda implying that D&D was witchcraft and made kids fall into the traps of evil. The fear of satanic cults could also be seen in the literature. Take the book Michelle Remembers, for example. It was a sensationalized telling of a patient's experience in therapy. The patient was allegedly abused and mistreated by a satanic cult. All the claims in the book were without evidence, and after the book was released, many of the claims made turned out to be false. The 80s were a good time to be a lot of things, but not a fantasy geek, apparently. Okay, let's end this on a decisive note. So, what should we make of this? Players of RPGs tend to be very intense, to say the least. So, should this be a matter of concern? Let's take our case to science. Thankfully, institutions like the American Association of Suicidology, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, and Health and Welfare Canada have all confirmed that there's no relation between D&D and self-harm behaviors. We can surely extend this conclusion to other RPGers as well. Let's hear it from the players themselves. Through the years, players have said that those games mean nothing more than a means of escapism, just like movies and video games. It's just a group of friends being nerdy together and jumping into a world of fantasy to have fun. There you go. Nothing to worry about, folks. Next, in other news. Noah and Doja Cat drama. A drama between these two is not on anybody's 2022 bingo card. Exposing Doja's messages to him in which she was asking him to hook him up with Joseph Quinn. And let us tell you this, Doja was not happy about it. His friend Millie got a response from Matt. Earlier on the press tour, Millie said the Duffers are sensitive sallies because they can't kill off major characters. Matt Duffer responded to this in a recent podcast, saying they explore all possibilities in the writing room, and there's always logic behind their decisions. But in the end, he did say that this might have only been his attempt to defend himself. Speaking of the press tour, these two never stop being adorable. In an interview for season 4, Noah and Millie said revealed that they've made a pact to get married if they're both single at 40. They said they'd be good roomies. Their friendship's perfect. That's a wrap for this video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one! Thank <laughs> you.